How will dill activity fare after a poor second quarter and lackluster back to school, with expectations for a poor holiday? Joining me is Jane Goldstein, co-head of M&A at Ropes and Gray. So Jane, because of a poor second quarter and a lackluster back to school, what are you seeing in terms of deal activity going into the fourth quarter of this year? Well, it's really interesting because you're right. The second quarter, um, I think the deal numbers were dismal when you compare it back to the comparable quarter in 2012. But I think we've also seen a lot of really important deals in the sector. Uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, um, Versace looking for minority investments, um, LVMH and Caring doing their investments in uh, hot young designers. Um, so it feels to me like um, there's a lot of activity that can be done. I think there will be challenges for the retailers themselves, but often challenges bring about change, and one of the things that happens in a period of change can be deal activity. Now, We've seen a rise in activist investing over the last few years. What may be surprising is how companies have tended to embrace these activist investors. What are you seeing in terms of companies and the relationship with activist investors right now? Well, I don't know that I would use the word embrace. Um, I, I think it's a reality. I think activist investors are more active, if you will, and I think what boards and CEOs are realizing is that they can't ignore them. Um, it was a very interesting quote today, I think, from the Darden's CEO who said, we, we listen to the current activist investor the same we listen to any other shareholder. So I think it's much more of an idea of the realization that you need to communicate um, well, both uh, on the external and uh, outgoing way, but you also have to listen and uh, take into account what your investors are saying. Will that create more deals? Um, I don't know if it'll create more M&A deals, but it may well create uh, more transactions, whether it be stock repurchases or spin-outs and the like. Now, legacy brick and mortar players who have been slow to embrace technology, what is their game plan over the next year or so in beefing up their e-commerce and mobile strategy, and who, what, would you, what are you advising those clients? Well, it's really interesting. I think there's so many new technologies that are being developed now, and they're getting smaller and smaller, and the handheld is by far where people are transacting. Uh, we recently announced this week a deal, one of my clients, where Swirl Networks is creating, um, through beacon technology, uh, ways for shoppers to see on their handheld are there special deals, and uh, the, the reaction to that has been quite favorable, and I think all retailers at the brick and mortar level are trying to find ways, you know, like Squirrel, but also others, where they can use technology to expand uh, their, their market with the younger set who's using these technologies. Thanks for joining me, Jane. Thanks for having me. And that was Jane Goldstein of Ropes and & Gray, and I'm Richard Collins with The Deal.